Hey guys, Richard Holder here, K24A2, fresh from a JDM source. Here's a question, how much are cams worth? More importantly, how high can you rev stock motor? In this video, we're gonna take a look at a cam swap on a K24A2 Honda motor, fresh from a JDM source. We're gonna find out how much cams are worth. We installed a set of Skunk 2 Ultra Stage 2 cams, they're a little K24A2. So, how much power are they worth? More importantly, how high do we rev this thing? You know it's a K24, the stroke's too long. It's got balance shafts in the oil pump. It's got everything going against it, but how high can we rev this thing? You might be surprised. Let's check it out. Hey, this is Richard's camera. I'm getting tired of watching you guys work on this thing all the time. What would happen if I just leaned back just a little bit? Nobody would even know. Ever so slowly, if I just lean back, nobody will even notice. Nothing to see here, nothing to see here. Just don't even look over here. Keep paying attention to the motor. I'm just looking up just a little bit. Just no, no. You guys keep doing, keep doing that, keep doing the yeah, yeah. Just keep working on the engine. I'm not doing anything over here. Just minding my own business. Just looking up, looking up. That's right. Don't even see you anymore. You guys are both dead to me. I can do my own thing. I'm free. I'm the camera. What? I was totally paying attention. I'm right here. I'm right here. Yeah, I'm behind you all the way. Yep. Motor, motor. Yeah, let's film. Yeah, what's up? What's up? better ones, but this one gets the job done. Okay. 
we take a look at the power output from yesterday where we ran the Kinsler injection on our stock cams on our K24, it made 272 horsepower and 210 foot-pounds torque. We ran this thing out to 7,400 RPM. Here's what happened after we installed the Ultra Stage 2 cams. Peak power went up to 299 horsepower, 298.6 but that was all the way out at 8,300 RPM. Now I think that the stock cans, if we would have continued to rev it, would have made more also, it would have rolled over sooner. But obviously the cams definitely want to add power and they definitely want to run at a higher RPM. Take a look and see how they did. Lost a little bit of mid-range here. So if you're gonna put big cams in, make sure you're ready to rev. The next test we ran was actually <laughs> suggested by one of the viewers. What they wanted us to do on our tri y header was to take it off and rotate it and then pair a different set of runners, obviously, because the exhaust provides scavenging and it helps draw, you know, help evacuate or scavenge air or exhaust pulses out of the next one. So that's the theory. So what they wanted us to do is rotate it and then pair different cylinders and find out if it, it was, the scavenging was affected. So we did exactly that. I'll go ahead and show you a picture of what I'm talking about on the tri y header. But here's what happened when we performed that test. You can see there wasn't a dramatic difference in power. Uh, in fact, this is kind of more like a run to run version um, if we would, without doing any kind of change. So I think it, it's, it's interesting. I was real excited about trying the different pairing, but we just didn't see a big difference in power by doing this test. On to the next one. After running our header test with a different pairing, we decided to change the header altogether. So we had a long tri y header and decided to install a short, larger diameter four into one header, thinking that this may help us on the top end. And actually, that's exactly what it did. So if we take a look, here is our four into one race header with shorter primary lengths. I'll go ahead and uh, put the measurements up here. You guys can take a look at that. But as you can see, it did switch, it did trade power, made more peak power um, up over 300, but did lose power. And then they kind of traded here from 4,000 to 5,000. And then again, from 5,000 to 6,000. Uh, for the most of the curve, they were the same. And then out at the top, the, the shorter header actually made more power. But it's interesting to note that when we did do the header change, we had to change where the VTEC actuation point was because it wanted to have VTEC actuation much later than the um, long tri y header. Interesting, so you definitely have to do some tuning when you're making a header swap. Okay guys, what do you think about the results of the cam test on our K24A2? Our JDM motor has the Kinsler injection where we had a couple of different headers on it. We also did the cam upgrades to all those Stage 2 Ultra Cams from Skunk 2, and those cams are very powerful, but they also want to make peak power at a very high RPM. As you saw, we ran this thing all the way out to 8700, and they were making peak power out at like 85 or 8600 RPM. That's a lot of RPM, so be prepared to rev that baby out. 
Also, I think those cams probably would work best with not just a stock head, but maybe a ported head. And we have that coming, but that's another test for another day. Right now, in fact, tomorrow, it's a boost day. Every good day is a boost day. We're gonna install a cheap eBay turbo. I'm even going to run the factory exhaust manifold. That's right, the factory exhaust manifold can be made into a turbo manifold because every manifold is a turbo manifold. I'm Richard Holder, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. More K24 testing coming up, and it's boost.